Hi, this is Political News in 5, and today is October 9th, 2022. I'm Aisha Osuri. I'm starting with women and the 2023 candidate list. Last week, INEC published the list of those who are candidates for the gubernatorial and state house of assembly, a 410-page document. Two weeks ago, they had also published the list of those who are running for the National Assembly and the presidency. So we're getting a clearer picture of how women are doing as candidates. Now, this data is from Invictus Africa, a nonprofit organization focused on gender. Now, we know already that the National Assembly, the total number of female candidates is 10, is less than 10 percent, with 8.4 for the Senate and 9.2 for the House. But what we don't know is how the parties are doing and how the zones are doing. Now, the party with the highest number of female candidates for the National Assembly is the African Democratic Congress with 51. Then the party with the lowest number, which is just a single female candidate, is the African Action Congress with just one woman running for the House of Representatives. Now, in terms of the parties of the leading presidential candidates, APC did the best with 25 female candidates for National Assembly. PDP comes a close second with 24 and labor trails with 16. Now, in terms of the zones, the Northwest has less than 1% of these female candidates, while the South-South is the zone with the highest number of female candidates. Now, it's very unlikely looking at these numbers that we'll see an increase in the number of women in the National Assembly in 2023. Right now, the representation is at 6%, one of the lowest in the world. Kenya, for example, in the last elections in August, did a lot better. They're now at 21% of women representation, still far from the 30% that they want, but at least they're making strides. They also had a historic 7 out of 47 governors going to women on the ticket. So congratulations to them. We in Nigeria need to review our strategy for how we want to get more women into elected positions, whether it's a mix of social and civic education and ensuring that more women are joining parties and gaining influence beyond the women leaders position within their parties. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is just how the presidential campaigns are engaging with women in general. Last week, we saw APC launch a special presidential campaign team that's made up only of women, about 1,000 women are on that list. The grand patron is Aisha Buhari, the first lady of the country. Of course, Remy Tinubu and Nana Shatima are the chair and deputy for their husband's campaigns. And the various APC governor's wives are in various positions. Now, the list generated some controversy because one, Dolakwa Oshibajo, the wife of the vice president, was missing from the list the same way her husband was. Is this because, you know, they don't support the same fifth ticket or is it because existing tensions still remain between the Tinubus and Oshibajos? We might never know, but it might be a mix of the of the two. And Joker Silva, a veteran Nollywood actress that people love, was on the list and that created some concern for some people who are unhappy that their favorite, one of their favorite actors or actresses is part of the Tinubu campaign. Now, the other controversy that was generated was about allegations that a market women's march in support of Tinubu was done through threats and coercion, where the women were told that they would lose their market stalls, which presumably they pay rent for if they didn't support the, uh, the campaign rally. Now, it seems that we have some old guard politicians who can't shake off this old way of doing things by threats and by violence. Now, on uh, the PDP side, we had the wife of Atikwa Bubakar launch something last week. She stand an acronym for security, health, and education, which she says are the things that are most important to women. Her husband was at the launch and pledged to have to give 60% of his appointment to women and young people if, if they delivered on their polling units. Now, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Now, it's not clear whether the other presidential candidates, OB, Kwankoso, and others, are going to have any special programs for women, but we'll be watching closely and trying to assess their policies, their promises, and their past performance when it comes to women. And that's something that all Nigerians should do generally about every issue they care about. Finally, the third thing is the medical refugee returns. Last week, Bolame Tinubu returned to Nigeria after his medical, not medical trip. While he was away and the controversy was raging, we had lots of APC members tripping over themselves to defend his absence. And the prize for the worst defender goes to Jomoke Okoya Thomas, the APC leader for APC women leader for Lagos State, who baffled by the you know curiosity that her principal's absence was raising, 
confess that she herself goes abroad for medicals and even though she has a she had built a medical center for her constituents whose name she couldn't remember now <laughs> um that's funny whatever the case we need at least two things regarding health to be on our ballot for 2023 one is that we have a policy about presidential health disclosures just like indonesia and other countries do second is that we have we need to know what's going to be done about the state of healthcare in nigeria according to lai mohammed we spend an average of 1.2 to 1.6 billion dollars a year on medical tourism i mean it's just think what that money could do to our own sector our medical sector in nigeria governance is everything and we really need to vote wisely the gubernatorial and state house of assemblies campaigns officially kick off on the 12th of october watch out for that that's it for me this week on political news in five have a great week ahead stay well bye